Hi, Steve and I are back to show you a few more flutes. Steve Nyoyo Shali, and I'm Daniel Yohaku Sergal, and we both studied under Ronnie Selden, and we have a collection of antique flutes here. I don't know if you've seen the other video, but they're very interesting. So what we're, we're going to do here is, I'm gonna play one, Steve's gonna play one, and we'll see how flute sounds, because everybody plays in a different way and has a different taste, and uh, lips and mouth uh, mm -hmm. and mind work differently with everybody. And that makes this a very interesting uh, A-B comparison, which I've seen nowhere else. So, um, and thanks for the people who have bought some of the flutes on the last video. It's appreciated, that's how uh, this channel's run. And these flutes uh, are from another era, so, if you decide to buy an antique flute, and many of these are 50, 100 years old, you basically get the sound of Japanese music the way it was conceived back when it was the thing. Uh, uh, it was not uh, being anything except appropriate to the, the world it lived in. So here we are. Um, I'm going to start with this flute here. This is a five-hole flute. And, uh, Large holes, modern time. It's oddly got three joints in it. And, um, because I'm putting my fingers down, the holes are really quite loud. I mean, they're big. What did you think? I like it. Yeah. Nice full sound. Was it hard or easy for you to play? No, it's fine. Yeah. How about the Mary's? I mean, did you find it was subtle or was it brass, brassy? Fine. Hmm. fine. Hmm. I'm not as warmed up as I could be, but well, fine. Yeah. yeah, well, we'll see when we go through the rest of these. I see this giant hole at the bottom. That means that the... When you do the Mary, there's a lot of air that can come out of there. Mm -hmm. So it could be louder. I could really bite into this one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, how do you feel in general? I like it. Yeah. It's it's easy to play, <clears throat> and it gets good sound. It's got um, good subtlety. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll go with a known entity, uh, Araki Kodo the Third. You can look him up on the internet. Um, normal size hold, uh, traditional shakuhachi one joint. Comes very classic, and uh, I give this a try first.
wait, you know what? what? Before you play it, mm. um, I think there's a problem here. Mm. Joint's very loose. Uh, it's acceptable, but it needs some um, some Vaseline in there to work it. So let me give that a try. So the slightest bit of air pressure that you lose in these flutes means you don't get a big ray. The person before me, there's a, a crack that started here. It was fixed with a piece of scotch tape, which I should get it fixed before I sell it, but it plays really fine. I mean, how could you get an Iraqi Kodo for cheap? Well, buy one with a hairline surface crack. <laughs> Kodo. I think you did a lot better than me with this flute. What do you think? Did you feel <laughs> anything it. better than... Well, it's a subtler flute than this flute. Yeah. Um, you have to work a little harder to get into the flute with your sound, with your breath column, which gives it a little more subtlety, expressiveness. Did you find that it, it made you play in a different way? Yeah, it's a little more of a zen feel to it. Than, than the other flute. So if you if you went to a concert with a koto and a mm -hmm. shamisen and you were doing traditional Japanese music, uh, yeah. you would I would I would go, with, would go with the more modern one with a more modern one because you can do more with it mm -hmm. quicker. Mm -hmm. If I were doing solo Zen work, I'd probably go with the Iraqi koto. Hmm. Okay, this is a very interesting field because when you look at these two flutes, one of them is. A quarter of an inch higher and there's a different thickness in the bore and the other thing is these holes are not <laughs> they're not coming across in the same spots so that threw me off when I was playing this and oh. I was reaching for something in it but once you own a flute you get used to it right away mm -hmm. but that's um, well, you know the large holes contribute to the ease of play and the largeness of sound so that's why it's not as subtle so as you have the a compromise Iraqi yeah yeah oh okay okay well um now we have a Matsuda here. He signed it, and uh, and I'll give this a try. No, it's not working for me. Oh, okay. Hmm, I'm having trouble with this too. shot because I found that I could get into it after a couple notes and it went, went okay. I can't get my oats on at all. Oh, okay, okay. Um, we have different, <laughs> different mouths, different lips. So this is a little harder to play and it's not as versatile, but it's much cheaper than all these others. So, and I found that when I did get um, it going, uh, it, it, it felt very inner for me. It felt okay. like I could search it out, and but not play loudly. But um, it's a very interesting flute. So um, interesting because we're going to have a difference of opinion as we go through this. Here, what do you think of this guy? Okay, this is a short flute. It's a 1.5. As opposed to these are 1.8s.
It's um, a, a nice flute with a nice sound and easy to play. Well, so. let me ask you a trick question. Mm -hmm. Why would you even buy a 1-5? One five? A one five. I, I mean, what's the point? You have a good 1-A, you have a good meditation flute. Why would you even buy a 1-5? One, one it's a matter of the spirit. It's, a, it's a, got a playful spirit. Mm -hmm. um, you may want to be playing it with other music that uh, fits mm -hmm. the key and, and fits the, um, mm -hmm. the pitch mm -hmm. range. It gives you an alternate uh, sonic space to work with. Hmm. I found it was uh, playful too. Mm -hmm. um, I think with children, they respond to this a lot. Mm -hmm. And you know, all that quick stuff you can't do because your fingers are, are close together. You can't do them on a large flute. It's just physics. Mm -hmm. So um, it's also really compact. I mean, if you have flutes in different sizes, you probably still don't even have a 1.5. I found it really interesting. Mm -hmm. so, okay, we'll, um, we'll go Easy on. to play, too. Definitely easy to play, and super solid. I think it has a really great character. This is Matsuda, and so you didn't think much of the other Matsuda. No. So this one here, though, is a shorter one. It's a 1.7. Mm. What do you think? It's also thin, relatively. Very different. I'm getting a great oats huh. in a row out of this, and I couldn't get one out of that. Huh. Very easy to play. Huh. Very big sound. That's funny. Very different from the other. But you know, it it's smaller, mm. but it has a bigger sound. Mm. It has a fuller sound, even though it's smaller. Mm -hmm. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. Well, I know why you would buy a 1.7. Mm. Because, do you know the pieces like Sudo no Sukumari, the, the crane pieces? Yeah. That's traditionally played on a 1.7. Okay. It's interesting, right? Right. And in the Sudo no Sukumari, it's a cry of the, the mating cry. They become sort of sweeter. When, and so this is not, if your fingers are used to the 1.8, and then to go to a 1.7, you, you hardly notice it. Right, I it's mean, very this, easy this is transition. A, this is one of my favorites of the bunch. It's really nice. Well, thanks for um, being on the show. And uh, we'll try to get back uh, with some more flutes. And if you have any comments about these flutes, uh, you know, write in and let me know. And I will bring you more flutes. So everything here is for sale and it's on eBay. So you'll have to check the comments to see if the flutes are sold. If you check the last video that we did together, uh, many of those are sold together. So see something, let me know, and uh, good luck. In any event, I think you get a chance to see how flutes can sound different depending on who plays them and personal tastes. All right, thanks. And Thank thanks you, for being sure. on the show. You're welcome. Bye.